What's up guys, we're back with another EcoBoost swap video. Today we're gonna to be going more in depth into the fuel system for the EcoBoost engines. And why you shouldn't listen to Ford or follow their instructions that come along with the 2-3 control pack. What Ford says to do is run a 50 to 55 PSI delta across the fuel injector. What does this mean? In a normal engine where we're doing port injection, if, we have, if we're under boost, under load, we have 30 PSI inside the intake manifold. We want to have 80 to 85 PSI in the fuel rail. We want to have 50 to 55 PSI more in the rail than what's in the intake manifold. This is all well and good, but it makes no sense for the EcoBoost engines because they are direct injected. And what that means is this is a crudely drawn EcoBoost engine, just a, a 2D sketch. Uh, what we'll have here is fuel pressure coming from the low side pump or the in-tank pump coming up to the top of the engine where there is a high pressure fuel pump. This high pressure fuel pump is connected directly to the cam via a plunger and that boosts the fuel pressure up and sends it down to the fuel rail. Our fuel rail connects to the injectors and those injectors go straight into the cylinder. And so the issue here is we can't really maintain a delta of 50 to 50 PSI across such a a large pressure here. Our cylinder pressures are going to be massive. So our high pressure fuel pump boosts the fuel pressure up to as much as 3000 PSI. So what does this mean for us? Uh, if we can't follow the forward directions. What do we do? So what I've done is taken a look at the Focus ST. Uh, this is the car that this engine would have came out of. Um, and what they're doing is 70 to 80 PSI on the low side fuel pressure up to the high pressure fuel pump and the car is letting the ECU and the high pressure fuel pump dictate what the fuel rail pressure should be. And it's an OEM system and it works great at that. We can just supply 70 to 80 PSI and it does everything else. The other thing Ford got wrong in the control pack instructions is their pump rating. They say to use a, at least a 155 liter per hour pump. That's good if it actually flows 150 liter per hour because that's about 300 horsepower worth of fuel. Uh, it doesn't give you a lot of headroom, but it, it, it could work. What I recommend is running something more like a 450 liter per hour pump. Because if you take a look at this graph that I've drawn out here, this is comparing the Walbro 155 versus 450 liter per hour pump. On our side here, we have our liter per hour flow rate. And on the bottom here, we have our pressure. And as you can see with a 155 liter per hour pump, as the fuel pressure increases, our flow rate actually drops. And at 75 PSI, where we want the pressure to be at, this pump's only flowing 90 liters per hour. And that's only good enough for 200 horsepower worth of fuel. This can cause catastrophic damage to your engine. If you run out of fuel, you will go lean and you will put holes in pistons. So if we look at the 450 liter per hour pump, the one that I recommend, and follow its line down, at 75 PSI, this pump is still flowing 300 liters per hour because this is meant to be a high pressure pump. That 300 liter per hour flow rate is good for about 600 horsepower. That's good headroom for if anything else would go wrong. If the pump slows down a bit and you're flowing less fuel, you're not gonna lean out and blow up the engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase all of this now and draw out what the fuel system looks like on my car. My car has been running perfectly fine at with this fuel system set up and this is what I think you guys should do. So what I've done on my car here is put a 450 liter per hour pump in the tank. Coming out of the tank, I'm feeding into an aeromotive fuel pressure regulator. With a fuel pressure regulator set at 80 PSI, that way if I have a little bit of a drop, it'll go to maybe 75 or even 70 PSI. Out of the regulator, I have a return coming back. This is all housed at the back of the car. The pressure regulator is actually mounted to the frame rail. This way, you don't have to run two fuel lines the whole way up to the engine bay and mount the regulator in the bay. This is just redundant. It's twice the amount of routing that you have to do and Ford does just the single line anyways. It's called a deadheaded system. So the line coming out of the regulator, it's just a single 3 8 aluminum hard line that I have run up, comes straight up to the high pressure fuel pump and the high pressure fuel pump has a quick connector on it. 
Um, you can buy them. I'll link the, well, we'll, we'll put the part up here. Um, you can purchase a quick connector that has a barb style fitting on the other side to put it to standard high pressure uh, rubber fuel line. So this is what I would recommend that you guys do. You can put the regulator up front if you want. There's no reason to just set it and forget it. So that's going to be all for this video. Stay tuned. Uh, I've got more stuff coming up with the Mustang. I've got more EcoBoost swap information to drop on you guys. Let me know if you guys like this or if there's any recommendations you guys have, but we'll see you guys next time.